Welcome in the 17th episode. In today's episode, we will implement advertisement in our game. So we want to have uh, two kind of ads. First one will be the banner ad, which will be played during our gameplay. And the second ad will be the interstitial ad, which will be played whenever we, on the game screen whenever we press display ad to continue button. So the player will be able to watch the ad and then carry on with the, with the gameplay. So before we do any implementation in the Unity, first of all, we need to import the SDK. So in this tutorial, I will use the AdMob ads. Okay, so let's go to the AdMob website. So here is the AdMob um, SDK. I will put the link in the description below this video. So you can just press this link and you will be directed to this website. So once you on, scroll down and you will see the download the plugin. So just click this download plugin and you will be directed to the GitHub. Click this Google Mobile Ads Unity package and this package should be should be downloading. Okay, so now I go to the show in the folder where is going to be the location where this plugin is downloaded. I will just copy this, this path and then I will go back to Unity and then from the asset select import package and then custom package. And then go to the, the location where you actually download that plugin and double click on it. Okay. So in the Unity, you will see this, uh, this pop-up window. Make sure you have everything ticked and then import. So you have to wait for a few seconds until everything is imported. And you should also see the, the Android dependency window. So just wait for that window to pop up. Okay, so here it is, the Android dependencies. So all of the dependencies will be resolved. So we have to just wait for this one to complete as well. And the window should disappear. That's fine. So once everything is imported, you should see the Google AdMob ads inside your asset folder and then play service resolver. Okay, so now to finish this implementation, first of all, go to the asset folder and you should have now the Google Mobile Ads and Play, Servi Play, Play Services Resolver. So go to the Play Services Resolver, Resolver and then select the Android Resolver and then Resolve. Okay, make sure you select that. Uh, you should have a window pop up, Android Dependencies and it succeed. Okay, and then press OK. So the next step is uh, actually to go to the Assets and then select the Google Mobile Ads and then settings. So you should see the inspector. And from here, we are going to select the Google AdMob. Just tick it. And now we need to put our Android app ID. So in order to get this Android app ID, you need to have the, the account on the AdMob. So I will just go to the AdMob. If you put the AdMob, OK? So go to the admob.google.com. And uh, if you have account, just log into the account. If you don't, just sign up. You can use your Google account to sign up and everything is for free. So don't worry about paying anything. So I'm just going to sign in. OK, so here is my account. And from uh, once you logged in, you will see the apps on the side. So I just select the apps and here is all of my games. And then you can select the add app to create new app and then we didn't have we didn't publish this app yet so no and then put the app name select the platform which is android and then follow along with the instruction i have already have a the app so i'm not going to create another one but once you're ready once you finish you can go back to the apps and your app should be should be on the list so select your app i'm going to select the sudoku and then over here in the app settings, if you select the app settings, you will have the app ID. OK, so just copy this number. You can select this icon from here to copy it and then go back to Unity. And then paste this this app ID over here. So I just going to use the test uh, app ID because I have already released this game. OK, so make sure you have this number in and then once you've done it, let's go to the file and then save. So if we quickly go back to the web page, uh, to, to our AdMob, you will see that 
under the under the application you can select the add units and then you you can add add unit and from here you can select the banner interstitial add re rewarded or native native advance okay so if you want to create any other advertisement you will have to select one of these and follow along with the instruction and once you done it you will have the the id number for the specific specific um, advertisement which we created so this number will be used in our in our game as well okay so let's go back to unity now and uh, we are all set and now we can start implementing our our advertisement so i will go back to the scripts folder and then right click create c sharp script and i will call the script ad manager okay and then let's open this up at manager in our uh, in our visual studio in our ad manager class i will not need we will not need any of the update method so i just delete it and the first thing we want to do is we want to put using statement so right at the top i will put using and then google google mobile ads dot api okay so make sure you put this one in after you imported the plugin, this one should be available for you. So I will now create some uh, few of the public variables. So first one will be public string app ID public banner app ID public string interstitial at id okay the next thing will be public at position and this is gonna be the banner banner position then public bool test device will be equal to false by default okay the next one will be public static and then it's gonna be the name of our class so add manager instance so this class will be the singleton class then next one will be private banner view and I will just call it banner banner view so this banner view will be will be needed to display our banner ad and then private interstitial ad interstitial and i will just put underscore before okay so now let's create the awake method so public void awake and inside the awake method we can do the f statement if instance will be equal to null we want to do the instance will be equal to this and then we want to put don't destroy on load this okay so otherwise we want to put destroy destroy this okay so this guarantee that we're gonna have only one instance of this class at any specific moment first of all in our start method let's uh, initialize the mobile ads so mobile ads dot initialize and we want to pass the app id which is this app id from here okay and then right below the start method i will create the private method private add the request create create request okay and inside this method i will do the add request request and then if is test device we want to do the request with equal to new add request dot 
builder dot add test device and we want to add our uh, test device so the test device uh, is added by by the by the unique identifier of your device which you're going to run this game so in order to take this this unique id of the device we can use the system info so system info dot device unique identifier and dot build okay so otherwise if this is not the test device so else we're going to duplicate this line of code and we want to move it down but make sure you just delete this add test device from here okay so we're just going to build and then of course we do the return request okay next i'm going to create some region so region and i will call it interstitial at okay and then end region so inside this region i'm going to create the public void create create interstitial at and then add request request okay so inside this function we're just gonna do that this dot interstitial will be equal to new interstitial at and then we want to pass our at unit so we want to pass this interstitial at id okay interstitial at id okay so this is the string value which we're going to assign from the editor and then we want to do that this dot interstitial dot load at okay and then we want to pass the request so we want to the load at function is just requesting the add unit from the from the add map from the google okay so the next function we want to do we want to do is uh, public void show show interstitial at and then if the this dot interstitial dot is loaded so the at is loaded already we just wanna do the this dot interstitial dot show okay so if the ad is loaded we want to load uh, we want to show the ad and then after that we want to do this interstitial dot load up so we want to request the next ad, the next ad and we want to put the create request okay so that's it for the interstitial ad the one thing which we need to do is we want to create the interstitial ad from our start method so in the start method i will put this dot create interstitial at and then we want to pass this create request okay make sure you put this line of code in the start method otherwise the at will not be created okay so that's it for the interstitial at and now let's uh, let's look at the at the banner at okay so i'll create another region so region and then banner up okay and then make sure you end region okay so as you see this is the, the region is very convenient way to actually sort your code so you can group up the functions okay so for the banner art we want to first of all create function public void create banner and we want to pass the add request and it's going to be request Okay, and then the next one will be this dot banner banner view will be equal to new banner view. Okay, and in the banner view, we need to first of all put the add unit ID. So I will just go up 
and grab this banner add ID and I will just paste it in then add size so I will just put the add size dot and you can set different sizes the banner full width leaderboard medium rectangle but I will use the smart banner for this tutorial you can experiment with different sizes if you like and then we want to have the banner position banner position okay so this banner position will be set from the inspector as you see here so right below I will just call this banner view dot load out okay and then we want to pass the request so we're going to request the banner at from the from the network and then hide banner hide banner okay we don't have this function yet so we're just going to create this function below so i will create this public void hide banner and this function will do the banner view dot hide and another function which will be public void show banner and this function will get the banner view dot show okay so two simplest function okay so we have all of the functions for the banner as well so i will just grab this create banner function and make sure you call it from our start method. So right below, when we initialize our mobile add, I will add another another line. So this dot create banner, and then create request. Okay, make sure you put those two functions in. So let's save everything. And that's it for the implementation of the add manager. Now we need to call these functions from within our game. So first of all, Let's open our menu buttons and right at the bottom of this of this uh, of this class, I will add another function which will be public void continue after game over. Okay, so this function will display the add manager dot instance dot show interstitial at and over here we want to also the restart the life so lives dot instance dot reset lives okay we don't have this function reset lives yet so we have to create it so let's quickly jump to our lives class and right at the bottom of this lives I will create the public void reset lives okay and then in the reset lives function we want to do the for each var error in error images and then we want to do the error dot set active to false so we want to deactivate it deactivate all of the access in the game and then we want to set the error number error number will be equal to zero and then lives will be equal to error images dot count okay so we're just restarting these two variables there is one more function also which we need to add in our clock class so go go ahead and um, open the clock.cs and right at the bottom of this class I will add another public function so public void start clock okay and this is simple function we're just going to restart the stop clock variable so stop clock will be equal to false okay so save it and then let's uh, now switch to our sudoku grid class i hope i'm not doing it too quickly uh, this is just the small changes which we need to make 
So in the Sudoku grid class, right at the top in the start method, we wanna we wanna actually display our banner. So add manager dot instance dot show banner show banner okay so this is on the start and then let's scroll down to to the disable method and try it at the end of this method of the disable method i will just put the add manager dot instance dot hide banner Okay, so when we exit from our game to back to the menu, we want to hide the banner. Okay, and then the, the last thing which we need to do is actually inside our grid square class. So let's open this grid square and scroll down to the on enable function. And we need to attach ourselves to one, one game event. So let's put ga game events dot on game over plus equal on game over okay and then let's copy the, copy this line and put it on the on the on disable function and make sure you change this plus to minus so now let's implement this on game over so right below i will put the private void on game over okay and inside this function we want to check if our number is not equal to zero and number is not equal correct number. So this function is needed because when we display the game over screen, we, we're just setting the color of our squares to be red. So once you once the player will see the ad, and go back to the game. We don't want that red color to, to stay there. We just want to clear down that red color and then all of the wrong numbers from the game. So this this is what this function will, will do. So if this is the wrong number, we want to set the has wrong value to be equal to false and then set square color to be color dot white Okay, so we're just changing the color. Then number is equal to zero. So we're restarting the number and then we're updating the display text. So display, display text. Okay, so that's it. That's all changes we need to make. And then let's save everything. And let's go, go back to Unity and let's the Unity compile all of the scripts which we modified. So now we want to create the new game object in our main menu. So right click create empty and I will call this object advertisement. Okay, and let's grab our ad manager script and drag and drop into this object. Okay, so first of all, we need to set our app ID. So this is the same ID which we set at the beginning of this episode. So I will just quickly go to the asset, Google mobile ads settings. And now we just grab this number, copy it, and let's click on the advertisement and paste it in the ad ID. Okay, so the banner ID and then interstitial ad ID, uh, this is something you can create as I showed you before, like uh, as I showed you at the beginning. Or just for the testing purposes, we can grab the test one. So you can get the test numbers from the, from the website and I just put the link in the description as well. So here is the website and this is the test ads and you can scroll down and you see you have different ads formats so banner, interstitial, video rewarded and st and, uh, and the other one. So I just copy the banner one, this number and copy it. Go back to Unity and paste it in the banner ad ID make sure there is no space at the beginning okay and then i'll go back to that website and then get the number for the interstitial as well copy it and then let's paste this one in and make sure there is no space 
Okay, and then from here we can set the banner position so you can experiment with different one. All of the options are displayed here. I will just select the top one and then make sure if you're testing, make sure you select this test, test device. Otherwise, you can create a false impression. If you put the real number here, uh, the, the, the one from your AdMob account, you can create a false impression if you not check this test device. Okay, so make sure if you're testing, make sure you just checked it. If you're releasing this game, you have to uncheck it. Okay, so this is something to remember. So let's save everything, save scene and save project. And now let's go back to the scene folder and I will quickly go to the game scene. Let's open it. Okay, so in our game, game scene, I will go to the canvas, then game over pop up and then continue with ads button. Let's scroll down to the on click events and let's click this small plus. So when we press this continue with add button, first of all, we want to grab our main camera and then drag and drop it onto the runtime object. From the function, let's select the menu buttons and then continue after game over. Okay, let's click this plus again. And then we want to get the timer. So grab this timer, drag and drop it into this runtime object. From the function, select the clock and then start clock okay and then click this plus again and then drag and drop the game over pop-up so the game over screen and then from the function select the game object and then set active and make sure this checkbox is unchecked okay so we want to deactivate the the game over okay we can now the, do the file save and go back to the main menu and let's quickly test our game if everything is working fine so just to remind you we won't see the ad in the in the editor because you need to run this game on your android devices in order to see the ads so we're going to do that in a, in a second but first of all let's see if everything is working actually when we press the button so if you okay if you make three mistakes you can play this play ad to continue and then the timer starts you have th three lives and then you can you can play continue playing okay okay so everything seems to be working fine let's now test this game on your on the android devices so in order to do that let's first of all go to our file then build settings and then make sure you are on the android platform and then in our build settings in the scene in build I have like an empty scene which has been deleted previously so I'm just gonna delete it make sure you have the two scenes and make sure your main menu is on position 0 not 1 so I just grab this main menu and then move it up okay so the main menu should be on the position 0 and the game scene on position 1 if you have the other way the other way around your game will start from the game scene and it will probably crash because all of the data is setting from the is set from the main menu so make sure you have the right order here okay then i will click this player settings button and over here you can set the company name if you change this name all of the android dependencies will be will be redone so i will just change this company name to coda coda plan studio press enter and i think the android yes the dependencies is just updating the, all of the all of the stuff from the android so just wait for a second okay seems like it's done so now we can set our icon so i will just press this select and then scroll down to see the icon so we have the icon double click and then i will go to the other settings and over here you have your package name which is the com.com company name and then game name and then you can set the minimum api level maximum api level this is going to be set when we're going to release this game and then the script the backend uh, probably you should have it like dotnet for for x but i will just leave it as as it is now because we're just testing but when you're going to release it the google play store required you to build the game for the 64-bit packages so you will probably will have to change this mono to to il2 cpp and then you probably will have to check the imr64 okay but i will not do that now 
because that's gonna be that's gonna add a bit a bit more time to the build. Okay, so let's scroll down to the publish settings, and in the publish settings, make sure you have this custom key store unchecked. Okay, we want to have just the debug one. So close it, and then we can. If you have your Android devices connected to your game, uh, to your to your to your PC, you can hit this build and run. But if you don't, and or if your device is not recognized, you can do like a build. You can select the 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 location where you want to build. So I will just select here, and then you can connect your phone, and you should see your phone in your in your PC. And then you can go to your phone and then create another directory and copy paste the APK which, a APK which you're gonna build. Okay, and then install it from there. So are we just gonna hit for now build, build and run? And are we just gonna override the existing APK? Okay. And give it a second and the game is gonna build. So as you see, I have my uh, I have the game on my on my device. And uh, I'm running this game on the Samsung Galaxy S5. So from this game I can press play. Easy. And as you see on the top of the screen I have the test at unit. So this is the banner which is displayed. And then I can pre press place, place some number. Okay. And then I have the game over pop-up. So on the game over pop-up I can press this play add to continue and we have the full screen add where we can exit and carry on our game. So sometimes it might happen like your art will not load it like this time because the guy the 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 APK does not have enough time to request the art or the art has not been available for you to display. So in this case the game will carry on as normal. And the next time when we're gonna actually display the game over screen, we can press it and you will still have the, the full screen at. Okay, so now when we go back, the banner disappear, and then when we go again, we have the banner again. Okay, so everything seems to, seems to be working fine. In the next episode, we will actually we will prepare our game to, to be ready to release on the Google Play Store. So I hope that you like this episode. If you do, please consider to subscribe and leave the like. Thank you very much for watching and see you again in the next episode.